up your eyes and look to the heavens who created all these. He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Who do you complain? Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, the hearer, but most of all the doer of God's just words. Let us bow for prayer. Most holy and gracious Lord, our creator, the one who sets his throne in the heavens, we come, Lord, to praise you, to lift you up, and to call on your holy name. Lord, we are seeking your face. For the record is, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Lord, we call on your holy name, Lord, because we know you are the awesome, the almighty. You are all powerful, all knowing, all seeing. You are God, and beside you there is none other. And we know, Lord, that you hear and you answer our prayers. And Lord, thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness, for your overflowing kindness and your tender-hearted mercy. Thank you, Lord, for remembering, Lord, that we are dust. For what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? We love you, Lord, because you first loved us. Thank you, Lord, for being so kind and so good to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sending your darling son, Jesus, foreordained before the beginning of the world, Lord. Jesus Christ, he is the firstborn of creation, Lord. He is the one who came from heaven, Lord, came to earth, Lord. He is our all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing, Lord. He is the one who healed the sick and raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He walked on water, calmed the sea, Lord. Hallelujah. He came, Lord, yes, and shed God. his Hallelujah. blood on the cross, covered yes, our God. sins, Lord, and yes. gave us a way out of nowhere, a way yes. back to the Father yes. in heaven. Thank you. And thank you, Lord, for that. And Lord, move by your spirit in this place, Lord. For Lord, we know it is the spirit that searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. And Lord, bless us, Lord, today, Lord. Please, Lord, give us words of wisdom from on high, Lord. Speak, Lord, through, through the, the man of God that's coming today, Lord. Gird him up, Lord, on every side, Lord. Crown him and anoint him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord, that he may speak peace, Lord. He may speak words of comfort, Lord, that, that gives hope, Lord, to your chosen Lord, we will ever be so careful, Lord, to give you all of the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask all blessings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. For another blessed day. But you are good. I say he's a good God. If he's a good God, come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah in this house. Glory to God. You are so good, Lord, and we just love you. We thank you. We thank you for all you do, Lord God. Hallelujah for blessing us to see a brand new morning. You are wonderful, God, and we just love you. We just come to love on you just for a little while, Lord God, this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the service? Just wave your hand like this.
practice. Hallelujah. But how many of you know we know enough songs in our heart to give God glory for a whole month? A whole two, three months. Hallelujah. Can, can y'all agree with that? Can you agree with that choir? I'm talking to y'all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to Triumph with everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, let's stand with us. Praise Him. Praise Him. Everybody, everybody.
y'all got to do that thing.
dear God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you are, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord yes, in this place. Are, come on, come on, stand to your feet. Come on, come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Lord. All the time and all the time, God is good. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We have so much to sing to God about. You know that? Amen. We're alive. Yes, Lord. Thank you. We're still here to tell the story yes. of his mercy yes. and of his grace. Amen. Amen. And I just love that song. Come on, give the Lord a round of applause. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Can, can you just play a little bit more of that for me? Just a little bit more. It ain't got to be long. Just play a little bit more of that. If it means anything to you, sing from your heart. If you're grateful for what God has done for you and doing for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're grateful, God. Every breath. Every breath. Yes, Lord. We're going to sing. Yeah. I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing of his goodness. Of the goodness of God. Yes, Lord, you're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of all that we offer to you. Nobody like you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. You've been so good. Yes, God, you've been very good, better than good to us. Hallelujah. We're going to sing. I will sing of the goodness of God. One more time. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the goodness of God. Now think about how good God has been to you. He's been good to you. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. In the name of Jesus. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Yes, they got a little more shit. Yes, Lord, you're worthy. Yes, Lord, you're worthy. Yes, Lord, you're worthy. If we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to say thank you, but thank you for what we have, God. Receive our offering this morning, God. Receive our offering of love to you. Receive it, Father. Hallelujah. I will sing. I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen, 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 and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for his grace, his mercy. We thank God for those who are watching our service by Facebook. Come on, try off and welcome them. We're just honored and thankful for your presence being on our service on today. And we just pray and hope uh, that something we share with you today would be something enlightening that would strengthen your faith and cause you to walk even closer with the Lord. We understand that it's never about us, but it's always about the name of Jesus. And we're just thankful for all that Jesus has done, the relationships that he has built in this ministry, the protection he's given us, being the priest of this house, being a prophet who guides us and shows us the way in the kingdom, just doing all that he does in the name of Jesus. And we say to you that if God does it for us, he'll do it for you. Ain't that right, Triumph? He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. Amen. We're just thankful. This is... Uh, our fifth Sunday seesawing, but this is also...
Champions Day. And we're just grateful for all of our families and friends who showed up on this morning. Come on, give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We have our uh, special guest speaker in the house this morning. Uh, my own, I ain't gonna say my only brother, but he's one of my brothers. Uh, he'll be speaking with us this morning, bringing the word from on high to share with us. Uh, Reverend Pastor Dr. Carlton Jones. He'll be speaking with us today. Amen. And we're just grateful for his presence here uh, on this morning. Amen. I ask that you bow your heads right where you are. I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar. We're going to ask that you just sit where you bow your heads. Um, Brother Shelby, I need to do something for me. Can you stand, sir? Yes, sir. Can you come up here for a moment? Don't you stand here. We want to pray with you this morning. We want to pray with you and pray for you. And we want you to know that you mean the world to us. And that we love you. And that you're not by yourself. You're a member of this house. And a member of the faith of God. The kingdom of God. And that's most important. And we want you to know that you're not by yourself. Everything that you're going through, we're standing with you. But most important, the kingdom got you covered. We love you with a God's love. And we're just honored for your presence, for you being here. Reverend, come on, quickly. Ministers, come on, will y'all come? I want to pray for him. No matter what you're going through, we want you to know God has already healed you. God has already made you whole. Yes, Lord. Thank you. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you're healed. Not because we said it, but because what he's done. And we speak faith over your entire body that you're healed right now. We decree that you are healed according to the word of God. Jesus said that it, through Peter's writing that everything that hung on the tree was cursed. But yet life came out of the death. Jesus brought life. And he is the light of hope that shines in you. We bind every disease, every sickness, every ailment. We decree in the name of Jesus that your limbs, your bodies, your organs, they're functioning according to the word of God. You are healed right now. We decree it. We speak it. And we declare that right now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, but right now, you are healed by faith in Jesus' mighty name. And we celebrate your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus said in his word as he spoke in John that we shall lay hands on those who are sick and they shall recover. We decree right now you're recovering. You are healed right now by faith. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name, we declare it and we stand on it. In Jesus' name. Because the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. In Jesus' mighty name. If two or three shall touch and agree upon anything in the earth, God is standing in the midst. And we decree that we're standing in faith with you, brother. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. Now come on, encourage them, church. Come on, encourage them, church. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Minister Mills, Brother Victor, can I ask you to do one thing for me? And I'm going to get out the way. Can I ask you to give us one more song? Then the next speaker, the next voice is going to be our speaker, and we'll proceed from there. Why are you looking? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I love you, he say. Oh. <laughs> Come on, stand to your feet in the house. Come on. Everybody stand to your feet. Come on. If you want that.
Praise the Lord. Saints, let's stand for a word of prayer. Father, we're grateful. We're very thankful to you on this morning. This is the day that you made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You made this day for us. Not we ourselves. So we're grateful and thankful. Many haven't seen this day. But yet you've allowed us to see it. And so we're in your presence. You say we're two or more gathered together in your name. You'll be in our midst. Thank you for your presence. We receive your presence, Lord. We honor you and we magnify you. We give you the glory that you may have the preeminence. You're Lord of lords and King of kings. You're the God of creation. We acknowledge who you are. And this morning, as we gather together, Lord, we ask that you instruct your people. For they are the sheep of your pastor. They're not ours, they're yours. And you have the word for your body. Not just here triumphant, but those around the globe that's listening. We ask you, Lord, that you would speak a ready word to them. That you encourage them and strengthen them, Lord, in their faith. That you give them something to move on with with joy it's your kingdom it's your glory it belongs to you and we give you praise in Jesus name amen and amen you can take your seats amen Genesis if you would Genesis chapter 37 verses 23 to 28 and then Genesis chapter 50 verse 15 to 23 Family and Friends Day. Praise God. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. You know, I've been thinking about this. I've been actually studying now for over a week. Praise God. Uh, you know, one thing I've learned to do, I, I'm learning to love God more than I love the pulpit. We need the Lord. And as we've seen things happening around the globe, especially in the church, we have to understand God's not going to share his glory with any man. And the church has a habit of falling in love with icons. And we'll love icons more than we love Jesus. Therefore, we falter. We don't understand that we, when we fall, you know, everybody will talk about entertainers. They'll talk about, you know, athletes. But God's not going to share his glory with famous preachers. When we look more to the preacher than we do to Jesus, that's idolatry. And then when I find people leave the church, because of a preacher, I question if they ever been saved. Because Jesus saved you. I love what Paul said. Paul said, some of you say that you have Apollo, some say you have Paul, but who are we? It was Christ that saved you. Our job is to point you to Jesus. And in this world that we're living in, it is the last day. I believe, though, I believe, I believe there's a last revival going to hit us. Peter said, in the last days, I'm going to, God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. God said, I'm going to do it. We keep trying to make it happen, but God said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pour out my spirit. And normally when you study church history, it's in the darkest of the moments, the darkest of times. And God, and most of them that I've seen, there have been a few where he's used preachers, but he's used the, he's used the, 
he used the uh, congregants. And they would start meeting up at houses and they would begin to intercede and pray. And God would do things. And a revival would start up and That one our black man that went to Los Angeles, actually it was started, I said Oklahoma, Kansas. It was the congregants. And he'll start, he'll cause the church, God will cause his people to start repenting. We just seen this on the college campus not long ago. Because we got to come clean with God. When I think about Family and Friends Day, <laughs> love would conquer a messy situation. Love would conquer a messy situation. I do bring you greetings from Biloxi, Sister Sherry. Amen. We left her sleeping. <laughs> but we just had a a community event in our house and in my, in my yard there's big water slides and all kind of stuff set up because Jesus said love your neighbor and I've been telling pastors this book is not made just to preach it's made to live y'all hear me it's not made to preach it's made to live our job is to be the best example that we can be before you that's our job. We're not perfect, but we should be growing. Where we were last year, we shouldn't be this year. Come on, say me and somebody. And hence Paul said this, follow me as I follow Christ. But if I'm not following Christ, come on somebody. So in Genesis chapter 37, verse 23, I'm going to read about a family. It came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it, and they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Israelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Israelites, and let, us not, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in, in our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then, they passed, then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, that they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Man, you have brothers like that. I wouldn't want them. Go to Genesis chapter 50. Verse 15, when you get there, say amen. I'm waiting on my computer to catch up. Verse 15, reads like this and Joseph and when Joseph brethren saw that their father was dead they said Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him messenger unto Joseph saying our father did command before he died sin. so shall ye say forgive I pray thee now the of thy brethren 
For they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespasses of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place, I am in, for I am I in the place of God. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day to save burst people alive. Now therefore fear ye not. I was nourish you and your little ones, and he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. I want to talk about loving through a messy situation. Loving through a messy situation. From the book of the beginning, there's always been family issues. Cain and Abel, I mean, they're right there near the very beginning of creation. But the, pro the question is, how do we handle a messy situation by trusting God's love? I think it's imperative that we look at the word and do a careful study. I'm not going to be a few long. I'm just going to give you a few pointers. But we all been through something. If you said you haven't, you haven't lived long enough, or you're lying. But we've all been through something. And many of us have been through something with each other, with family. Because I believe that's where the test is. Hence, we have the body of Christ. And even though we say that the body of Christ is the hospital of God, it's also the boot camp of God. That when God brings us together from different walks of life, and in the church, I mean, from diverse cultures, then we have to learn how to love people where they act. And they're not always going to see things the way you see them. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? And God has not called us to argue with one another. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But he's given us a book that if we'll use the book, come on somebody, if we'll use the book, the book will walk us through to where we end up with peace on the other side. We can see this life with Joseph. We can see this life with his brethren. And one of the things that caused this issue was jealousy. Another thing that causes it is being a tattletale. <laughs> Sometimes some of us talk too much. We tell things that we shouldn't tell. Come on, say amen, somebody. We all have our issues. Come on, somebody. I was talking to my wife one time. I said to her, I said, you know what? We all got some craziness in us. Come on, somebody. I know you're saying that you don't. You just don't know yourself. But Jesus said this in Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Then said his disciples, it is impossible that offenses will come. They will come. Tell somebody, offenses will come. It's going to happen. Jesus said it will. If anybody knows, he knows. Is that right? Well, let me give you some other words for offense or offend. It means to hurt someone's feelings. It means to upset, displease, to wound, to be a pain in somebody behind, to embarrass, to humiliate, to scandalize. What do you mean scandalize? To say, to repeat something that you don't know, but you heard somebody else say about somebody else. To scandalize somebody's name. Shock, to shock, to anger, to irritate, to get under someone's skin, to disappoint, 
to put off, to turn someone in stomach, to sicken, to repel. Why do I say all these words? Because we're on Facebook and different cultures use different words. In our job, the gospel knows no boundaries. And we need to communicate not just to you, but to those that's listening to the gospel. And sometimes we don't really know why we're angry, why we've been offended. And I've learned that we have to identify what we are feeling. Because offense is going to come. And many handle offense in different ways. I've seen people leave church. I've seen people, you know, as a pastor, it blew my mind how families would turn on each other during funeral times. I'm not talking about what just happened. I'm just telling you, it just blew my mind. It blew my mind how family, there's family members that wouldn't even talk to each other because daddy said to us and mama, teeth and tongue may fall out, but they still stay together. You don't need love until you need it. Let me say it again. We don't need love until we need to learn how to do it at the right time. And so Jesus talked about this a lot. Colossians chapter 3 helped me some years ago in my marriage. Verse 19. It said, husband, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Well, one of the word meaning of bitter means not to be harsh. Another one means hurt. And for most men, it's hard for them to identify their emotions. Sometimes our wives will say, well, is everything all right? No, everything good, everything good. But I had to get learned that men hurt as easily as women hurt. I don't hear nobody. Come on, somebody. We handle it differently. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But men, until we identify that, it could destroy our families if we don't identify what's going on in us. Once I can identify what's going on in me, I can communicate it to you. Come on, say amen. Hence, in our culture, we have a communication problem. The Amplified said, Husband, love your wives with an affectionate, symp sympathetic, selfless love that always seek the best of them for them and do not be embittered or resentful towards them because of responsibilities of marriage. It is a responsibility. What most women don't know is that when men can't do what you want them to do, internally we become angry. We're not angry at you. We're angry at what we can't do. Hence, wives are supposed to pray for their husbands. God created men and women differently. Are you hear what I'm saying? There never should be a competition. But your strength become my st strength and my weaknesses. My strength become your strength and your weaknesses. That's what makes us whole and complete. I don't want to camp out there. So... Here's what Joseph didn't do when he got in power. Number two, don't revenge yourselves when you're hurt. Don't revenge yourself when you're offended. Romans chapter 12 verse 19 said, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. One of the reasons I got to identify what's going on with me because Joseph learned through everything that he was going through, God had a plan for his life. What looked like it was their doing, it was actually God's doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I've learned that the hard places in my life either going to help me grow or I'm going to regress. 
If I don't learn how to walk in love and mercy and forgiveness, I'm going to regress. And Jesus said, iniquity will increase and our hearts will grow cold. A wax cold. What's it waxing cold from? It's waxing cold because you, we got pain that we're carrying internally and we, not, we can't forgive. Come on, somebody. And we live with that. So as Joseph was going through, he stopped at Potiphar's house and God blessed him. Come on, somebody. He didn't forget what his brothers did with him, but he's dealing with it. Come on, somebody. Are y'all hearing with me? Tell somebody, don't stop living. You got to keep walking through it. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. Come on, somebody. For the Lord is with me. Say, the Lord is with me. I don't care how big the family is. God's not going to share you with anyone. And so every one of us have to have our personal relationship with the Lord. Because you can be in a family. I was in the family of, of 11 of us. And you can feel like you're all alone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can be in a marriage, be in the same house, same bed, and feel like you're strangers. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because I've got to have my own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leaded me, he restores my soul. Come on, somebody. See, see, I need my emotional health to be strong and vibrant. So don't revenge yourself. Tell somebody, don't do vengeance. We have to learn to love like we've never been hurt. We have to learn to love with the future in mind. We need a vision from God. Joseph had a dream. Those dreams were his vision. When, you, when we don't have a vision, we cease to live. We're walking around, but we have no purpose, no direction. I wanted to be an engineer. One of the things that drove me, my Aunt Lena was still living. And I used to say to myself, I want to go ahead and get my degree. So when I get my degree, I can get me a good job, and I can take Aunt Lena, and I can take her in, and I can take care of her. Because she spoiled me. I'm just being real. Come on, somebody. But it gave me something to focus on. Because the other my, the, 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 those that I hung up with, they was getting in trouble. Some of them lost their lives early. Come on, somebody. Because when you don't have a vision, come on, somebody. And every child has a dream. Every child has a dream. You have to nurture that dream. You have to nurture that dream. Come on, somebody. But every child has a dream. And what we can't do is try to make my dream their dream. First Peter 3, verse 8 and 9. I want you to look at it. First Peter 3. We're going to go through some scripture here. We've got nine minutes. We'll start with verse 8. We need tools for learning how to love. He said, Family be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love the brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Now God's saying, don't be phony in this. We really have to learn how to be merciful towards one another. 
James said, in many things we offend all. So, so I'm not the only one, come on somebody, that's being hurt. I have hurt others unknowingly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes my personality don't mess your personality. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. See, I had to learn this. It's not always really about me. Sometimes our personality is not matching up. Are you hearing me? But God, by the Holy Ghost, expects us to grow so that we can handle that a little bit better. Come on, say amen. Great is he that's in me and he that's in the Lord. I am not alone. Come on, somebody. I may not be able to do it today, but I'm going to keep working at it. I'll get to it. Amen. Proverbs 17, verse 13. Marcus, I thought they wrote these down. But it says, a soft answer turns away wrath. I have to be mindful how I speak to folks. I, I, I was supervisor right there. I pastored for right at 19 and a half years. And then, I, you know, God said, I need you to step away from that. I thought I was being demoted. And then he put me in a supervisory position. And all of a sudden, I started dealing with colonels. And at, at, at other times, there was generals. God needs somebody that can be there for them as well. And I can't take this religious attitude with me. I have to care about them. Are you hearing me? Daniel cared about King Nebuchadnezzar. If he had not cared about him, King Nebuchadnezzar would have killed him. And the reason that the king would take the words of Daniel is because he knew that Daniel cared for him. And the way he spoke to the king at times, see, people read it like he was arrogant. He was not arrogant. He was a humble man. He would go pray for the king. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, pray for your enemies. One of the ways that we learn to love is by learning how to pray for those that we call our enemies. So he says, verse 9, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. So those two different words. Don't give evil for evil. Don't give insult for insult. We see this happening in family. You call me a name, I'm going to call you another name. Come on, somebody. He said, no, no. As believers, we don't insult one another. Are y'all hearing me? Ephesians says, we're supposed to let words of grace come out of our mouth. In other words, one translation says, don't let profanity come out. We are in this world, but we're not of the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As the church, if I'm going to learn how to walk in love, i got to get in the book and find out how to do it God's way. My commanders, they say, they say, you know, you're not a yes man, but I can tell you care about my career. Because that's what love is. It cares more about their career than just being a yes man. And there's a way to say no without being disrespectful. Come on, somebody. Romans 12, verse 17. I'm watching the clock. It said, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Is that right? Proverbs I'm going to look at this, 17, 13, because I think it's so important. While we understand why God's saying we must learn to love even our enemies. Whoso, it says, Whoso, whoso reward evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. I don't know if y'all know this. 
But you can look at certain families and there's generations of bad stuff that happened. It happened with the parents. It happened with the children. It happened with the children's children. It happened with the children. The Bible calls this generational curses. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? But when we come to Christ, the Lord is literally breaking that curse off of us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. But I'll never see it if I don't learn how to renew my mind with the Word of God. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't do things the way you see it on TV. In fact, turn the TV off more. Jesus said it this way, be careful what goes into your ear gate, be careful what goes into your eye gate. Because some of the stuff we watch on TV is hurting us in our families because we don't know how to handle it. So when daddy said, teeth and tongue may fall out, but they still stay together, that means I got to learn how to love Dexter, amen, even when we're at odds. Y'all not hearing me. You may, I may say something about him, but you better not. Come on, somebody. No, no, I, I know, but this is what God said. When it comes to the body of Christ, you don't take the world's word over, come on, somebody, the family of God. And then God does something really special. God says, I'm going to give you a fr friend that sticks closer than a brother, like a David and Jonathan. See, these type of friends are almost like covenant relationship. That when I'm going through something bad, they got my back. Like you and me, we can fight one another, but you better not mess with us. Y'all ain't hearing me. Let's camp out. Let's end with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I want you to meditate. This book of the law should not depart of your mouth, but you should meditate in the day and night. When I'm going through a hard time, when my heart has been broken, when, I got, when I'm dealing with alls, when I'm dealing with issues, I camp out here. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Because the Bible is your prayer book. I don't have to remember prayers. This is my prayer book. First Corinthians thirteen four. NIV. Oh my goodness! Time getting low. Come on. NIV. First Corinthians. I want y'all to see this. This this helps me. It says this. My goodness. When you're rushing, that's what happened. All right. It says this. That charity suffer long. Uh, in the end of it, you say love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. I take this word, especially when me and Sister Sherry are going through some, me and the kids, and I apply it to my life. And I ask myself, am I being patient? Am I being kind? See, you can love somebody and not speak kind words. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, the Bible is my thermometer. Come on, it lets me know when I'm walking in the Spirit, and when I'm walking in the flesh. So I take it, I says, love, God's love working in me is patient. Because you got to be patient sometime a long time. It's kind. It does not envy. That means it's not jealous. According to the book of Proverbs, a lot of rheumatoid arthritis come from jealous people. Oh, you go read it. It's not boastful, it's not proud, it does not dishonor others. Love does not dishonor one another. 
It's not disrespectful. Not even to the kids. Y'all don't know how they hit me. Because if I'm going to keep them close to me, even when they don't want to be, I got to love them more. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I got to love them when they don't want to be loved. It's not self-seeking. It can't just be my way. Y'all hear me. Selfishness has destroyed many families and many marriages. I did not know how wicked selfishness was. I'm telling you, I didn't know. And two years ago, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, you don't know how selfish you are until you get married. Y'all think about that. See, it's not meant to be funny. That was revelation to me. Because you can't know how selfish you are until you're in a relationship. You don't know how much you're demanding your way. And people are getting divorces oh, because they can't get their way. Now hear what I'm saying. The two shall become one. That's what marriage is. The two is not two individuals. It's two coming together and becoming one in their family. Come on, somebody. It's not like my like dad and Ethel B used to do it. No, it's like me and Sherry have to come into agreement. And it can't always be my way. Even as the head of the house, that doesn't mean it's my way. The head means to imitate Jesus. Come on, let me tell you now. And he laid his life down for the church. He's not making you tired. He's not making you repent. He's not making you to forgive. He ain't making you do none of this. And he's still loving you. Come on, somebody. And what the way he gets you straight is by the washing of the waters of the word. When you come here, he's giving you a bath, a spiritual bath. And as I close this, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It keeps no records of wrong. Lord have mercy. Carlton Jones. I was so way off. Listen to me tell you something. When you go to sleep or you lay down and you think about wrong that's been done to you, you ain't free. You're not free. Doctors have, have now seen it. statistically many sicknesses comes from unforgiveness. If by the stripes of Jesus we've been healed, but it's not taken effect, then why? I'm telling you, relationships is very important to God. And Joseph said this to his family. He grew. Somebody say, he didn't go through all that. The devil is a lie. When he seen them, he remembered. I say he remembered. But as he was going through those moments where he sent them back, he's, he's taking God's word and he's wrestling down evil thoughts. And in the end, he was free. He said, you meant it to me for, for harm. But God used it for good. Because I've seen my purpose. Amen? I'm saying to you, each of us, there's a bigger purpose. And if you allow God to help you walk in love, you'll forgive your enemies. And sometimes our enemies are our own family members. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We have to learn how to do it God's way. I said, Lord, he said, yeah, I can make my complaints known to him. I would talk to him. I don't like her right now. See, see, he wanted me to talk to him, then talk to somebody else because we poison people. I remember when I, was, I started in the ministry many years ago, and the family wouldn't come in. When I would come in town, and just before Pastor Dexter was pastoring, and they would go be with Nidoray, 
Man, they used to rub me in the wrong way. They never knew this. They never knew this. And, and I had to deal with that. And I had to take these scriptures here. And I never forget when the Lord, the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, you told me you would go with me if you had to go all by yourself. Come on, somebody. See, we, we sometimes, we fall off with people for the wrong reason. God said, I didn't call them, I called you. And that was the day I stopped expecting, amen, family to come, and they started coming on the coast being with me. Give God a hand. God bless you. the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Great word. I needed it. I don't know if you needed it or not. I needed it. So Jones, I needed it. It hit me where I needed it. Amen. God knows what to give you and how to give it to you when you need it the most. Amen. Amen. And sometimes you have to be honest with yourself. You know, he says, you know, uh, you know, sometimes my greatest enemy can, can be our family. Sometimes you can be your own worst enemy. You can be the cause of where you are and won't face the reality that it's your fault and won't own up to it. And I have put myself in a lot of predicaments that I didn't need to be in because of me. It ain't because of my wife and my children or anybody else, because of me. And that's a reality. And that's a harsh reality to face when you cause your own problem. And it's a painful one. Y'all know that? It's painful to tell yourself, self, you're wrong. I had to go home last week. I said something to somebody here at the church last Sunday. And I was on my way home. I ain't calling no names. I was on my way home. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you were wrong for the tone that you use. You should have never said it in that magnitude and in that manner. You were out of place. But yet what I was saying was right, but what the way I said it was wrong. And I called this person on the phone. I said, I said, how you doing? She said, I'm doing fine. I said, I'm calling you because I want to apologize to you. I said, because the pastor was wrong. And what I said, I said, and I want to apologize to you. I was pastor enough to be a pastor, but pastor enough to also know that I need to repent. And I had to repent to this person. And she received my repentance to her. And she said, Pastor, I forgive you. She said, but ABC123 occurred, and that's why we did what we did. I said, I got you. And I said, but we're going to correct that problem because it didn't come from the past. I said, but I won't apologize. Just because we pass don't mean we're always right. You know. I make some mistakes with my children, with my wife, and with the church. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm just giving our young folks time to come in. Uh, we want to thank our speaker. Come on, give my brother. Uh, come on. Come on, encourage him. Come on, I know the message bless you. I'll be able to give him a round of applause. Great word. In season, on time. Amen. And we thank God for uh, his love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. For those who are watching by Facebook, we thank you for tuning in to our broadcast on this morning. And it is our ultimate prayer is that something that we offer, share with you, has been a blessing to your soul. And if by chance you don't know Jesus, we simply offer to you that was given to us. Paul says it's best in Romans 10 that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, that we shall be saved. And we just believe that if you accept that word and follow that word, God would do the same for you. God is no shorter than his word. If he said it, you should believe it. And that's enough. We hope and pray that you receive this word. 
walk in forgiveness and motivate yourself to operate in love. Until next week, God bless you. Know that we love you with a God's love and know that God loves you best and he proves his love by sending his best gift to us and to you. And no matter where you are and what you're stuck in, you can come out because Jesus already brought you out. We love you. We thank God for you. And we will see you same time, same place on next week. Come on and encourage and triumphant.